in the last class in the last class we discussed uh, you know probability distribution and uh, probability density function and uh, discussed the properties of uh, probability distribution function okay and uh, then we considered some examples of uh, probability density function like you know i mean uh, normal that is gaussian density then then uh, binomial distribution that was a distribution and we considered the corresponding density also probability density function also then we considered uh, uh, binomial okay we considered uniform probability density and all that okay we in today's class we start from that we consider one more uh, probability distribution function which is very useful especially in queuing theory and uh, network related problems uh, that is called poisson distribution here x it takes values like you know 0 1 2 dot 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 k dot 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 dot, dot okay the probability of x taking k will be given as u to the power minus a into this into a to the power k by factorial k, where a is a parameter. Question is can a be negative? You see a cannot be negative, it is because if you consider this uh, you know negative power odd powers of k, odd values of k that is odd powers of a here say to the power 1 or a to the power 3 or a to the power 5 and all that. Then obviously, if a is negative the entire thing becomes negative right and probability cannot be negative. So, from the, in the definition itself it is implied um, that a is a positive number okay. and uh, depending on the a that you choose you get one particular distribution or other right. So, if that be so, there is a corresponding uh, probability density function. So, this is just a probability, it is not even probability distribution, it is, a, it is just the probability of x taking k. So, corresponding density function as we discussed the other day will be what? There will be impulses at 0, at 1, at 2, at k and like that, okay. and each impulse, say an impulse at kth position, we will have a weight given by these. Okay. Okay, this is the probability density function for this. All right. One thing you see for this uh, distribution, if you find out this ratio, where p subscript k is nothing but the probability that uh, of x taking the value k, that is. Uh, in an expanded form, we wrote earlier it like that capital P within bracket x equal to k. In short, we are writing it as P subscript k. So, if you take the ratio of these two, that factor e to the power minus alpha cancels and you know after some cancellation and all that, you can easily verify that you get things like this. Okay. Now, A is a positive number. Suppose, I mean A could be integer or A could be you know fraction. All right. Now, as long as k remains less than a, suppose k starts at 0, then 1, then 2, then 3 or like that it approaches a. As long as k remains less than a, this ratio is less than 1. So, that means for k less than a, 
this is less than 1. But since k is increasing, what is happening is this, I mean uh, the two values p k minus 1 and p k they are coming close, okay, because initially it was 1 by a, then 2 by a, 3 by a, so it is increasing, which means the gap between the two is decreasing. Finally, at k equal to a, if a is an integer or k equal to you know the nearest integer from below from a actually, I mean if you consider a to be a fraction, you just consider the integer just below a, when k is equal to that, then it reaches its uh, uh, its value, its maximum value actually in that say in the sense that after that this will become in, this will uh, go on increasing. Okay. So, at that point the gap between these two is minimum. On the other hand, when k crosses a and goes beyond then what happens is that you know this becomes greater than 1 progressively which means p k then decreases. So, initially p k goes on increases increasing around a it reaches its maximum that is the maximum I was talking of. Then as k goes beyond a far and far you know from a p k again decreases. So, around a it has its maximum right. From this you can also see that if a if a is less than 1, then obviously from this discussion it follows that p k has its maximum value only at k equal to 0, because p 1 as you go for p 1 or p 2 you are crossing a. So, the value of p k starts decreasing which means p k has its maximum value at k equal to 0. Otherwise, as I told you earlier, p k increases and when you reach the vicinity of a, it reaches its maximum and then it starts falling again, right. So, actually if you have to plot it will be like this impulses it should be p x rather. So, let me okay. So, these are the impulses and p x is the summation of these impulses actually superimposition of these impulses and distribution function will be like this. If the gap is reducing since p k is no longer increasing you know it saturates it becomes like this it approaches 1. This curve is your f x. Okay. This is for Poisson distribution. Now, we have considered binomial distribution, we have considered of course, Gaussian distribution, we have considered uniform distribution, we have considered Poisson distribution, but these are not all there are other distributions also you know for instance, air length distribution or Rayleigh distribution and all that. So, it is not possible to cover all of them, they have got uh, in this course, they have got their standard uh, expressions and all that. So, I would recommend that you consult the book by Papolish or some other book and then uh, just see what those expressions are and all that. Okay. I now move to what is called conditional distributions and conditional densities. See when I was discussing just probabilities, then after introducing the notion of probability, you know. 
I just move to something called conditional probability okay. and using conditional probability I finally arrived at what is called total probability and Bayes theorem. Okay. Now, we are no longer discussing just probability of a particular event okay. rather we are discussing the probability distribution of a random variable okay, which is a very spe special type of probability. Okay. Even in this context too we would like to see what is meant by or whether we can construct uh, similar notions like uh, conditional probability distribution and uh, conditional probability density function. Okay. Now, you know just to recall earlier we have seen that uh, P of some event A condition to the fact that an event M is to take place, then the probability of the event A's occurrence that was denoted in like this and that was called the conditional probability of A subject to the fact that M has already occurred. That was defined as where P of A comma M means the joint probability of the events A and M taking place simultaneously, simultaneously right and P of M is the just the probability of the event M that is how it was defined. Okay. We can use this definition to obtain a similar uh, notion for conditional uh, probability distribution function and from that we will go to conditional probability density. Now, here we will consider this thing you know capital X is some uh, value we are taking that to be some real number this is nothing but probability of the random variable X taking value less than equal to capital X subject to the fact that the event time has taken place. Okay. See so, earlier we are considering just conditional distribution at that time we had f of x was, was equal to what the, the probability of the random variable x taking values less than equal to capital X. Mind you I mean this set the random variable x generates events like this that x less than equal to capital X means what it actually amounts to a collection of events for which the random variables takes values less than equal to capital X. So, it is a probability of those that event subject to the fact that the event time has taken place that is the precise uh, mathematical meaning of this. Now, here I can simply use the notion of uh, conditional uh, probability as done before and this will be nothing but so this is a this is a joint probability okay, and divided by P of M. Okay. So, this is a joint probability divided by P of M. So, this is how we, we express what is meant by conditional distribution function. Okay. Now, you know after all uh, from this definition it should be clear to you that this distribution function also satisfies all those properties which a simple distribution function probability distribution function was satisfying. Just to explain that first consider that the property first consider this thing f infinity by m that means this is equal to p
Now, as I told you earlier also by our construction or by our rather definition of a random variable x less than equal to infinity. Now, there cannot be any event for which the random variable can take the value infinity. So, that means, if you consider the event for which x is less than equal to infinity, then you have to consider all possible events, because for all of them the value of x is finite, which means x less than equal to infinity is the total set or total event. So, joint probability between the I mean total event and just an event m will be nothing but since event m is a subset of these, this will be nothing but p of m only, which means this is equal to p of m divided by p of m of course, which is equal to 1. So, that property number 1 is satisfied. In a similar manner, in a similar manner, you know, consider you know, consider uh, property number 2 that is uh, f minus infinity subject to m. Again, this is nothing but since there is nothing left of minus infinity as I told you last time this actually amounts to this. Okay. But as I told you last time also by your very definition there is no event for which the corresponding uh, value of x can be minus infinity the corresponding probability is 0. So, this is an impossible event. So, intersection between the impossible event and m will be the impossible event for which the corresponding probability is 0. So, this will be equal to 0 by p m which is nothing but 0. So, again probability I mean this is the property 2 which is satisfied all right. Then third thing this is I would change it rather this is a non decreasing function obviously, because uh, we know that we know that f x by m is nothing but okay and uh, this as this is a probability of course, this is joint probability, but you know m is a specified event. So, obviously, as capital X I mean the event if you if you consider x less than equal to say x 1 okay, you get f x 1 by m and you consider x less than equal to x 2 you get f x 2 comma m and if x 1 is less than x 2 that means, this event this is a subset of this this event is a subset of the event x less than equal to x 2 which means this probability is less than equal to the probability p x greater than equal to x 2 comma m. I mean let me write it elaborately for your sake that is uh, if you write like this And if it is given, if x 1 is less than x 2, obviously this event is a subset of this event. Okay. So, corresponding probability, even if it is a joint probability, corresponding probability 
or this event is a subset of this event you can even say that this joint event is a, a subset of this either equal to this or a subset of this which means the probability of this probability cannot be higher than this. Okay, so, this is less than equal to this that is this means Okay, so, it is as we put a non decreasing function in x all right other properties also follow very easily that is uh, if for some x 2 for some uh, x naught you know it is given that if x naught by m is equal to 0 then obviously for x less than equal to x naught ok. This follows you know from that non decreasing nature of uh, this function uh, f ok. Since at minus infinity its value is 0 and at x 0 its value is 0 and the function can only be non decreasing it cannot fall down. So, all the values in the range minus infinity x 0 has to be 0. Okay. This is pretty simple. The other thing which is very useful always whether it is probability distribution function or conditional probability distribution function is this that is uh, what is the probability of x subject to m. Now, this is you know you can always write like this So, this is actually a difference between the two distribution functions. Okay, this is pretty simple, this is very much like you know this uh, um, probability distribution function that we considered last time. You can see that whatever properties we had for the condition for the condition sorry for the probability distribution function, they are all valid for uh, conditional distribution function. Okay. So, in a similar manner, like uh, we defined uh, probability density function from probability distribution, we can also define a conditional probability dis density function from the conditional probability density uh, di distribution okay. and this we write like this P of this is the conditional probability density. this is nothing but ok. So, this is the derivative ok. Now, I take an example. I take an example where I will be trying to obtain the pro conditional probability distribution and from that conditional probability density. This example is like this you know I mean uh, that uh, tossing a die you know it is a fair die there are 6 faces one face marked with 1 another 2 then 3 4 5 6 6 faces ok. Point is as you die you know as you toss a die you know you 
get a face and the face is marked face marked with i where i is either 1 or 2 3 4 5 6 6 faces and the random variable x it takes the value 10 i this is how so if the face 1 turns up it takes the value 10 if 2 turns up, it takes the value 20 and likewise it can go up to 60. Okay. Now, our problem is given m is either face number 2 or face number 4 or face number 6 that is given that only even numbered faces are showing up subject to this what is the probability there is condition to this what is the probability distribution of this random variable x okay this is the problem that is we have to find out where m is this all right Okay, so you know, let's proceed like this. Suppose we first consider this case. Okay, x greater than equal to capital uh, x greater than equal to sixty. Capital X greater than equal to sixty. That is case one. So you know this can happen when either phase 1 turns up or phase 2 turns up or phase 3 turns up up to phase 6 turns up because you either get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 or 60. Even if capital X is 70 or 80 or even 60, okay. it means that any event taking place will satisfy this, right. But you know we are condi conditioned to the fact that not any event, but only even faced, even numbered, even numbered faces are turning up. Okay. So, in this case, what we have? sorry consider this hmm. consider this firstly what is p of m p of m means the probability of any even numbered face turning up. So, there are three even numbered faces 2, 4 and 6 and it is a fair die, it is not biased. So, P of n will be what? Total number of faces was 6 out of which 3 qualify for this. So, probability of that will be 3 by 6, pretty obvious. Consider this here. In this case, capital X could be either equal to 60 or 61, 62, 63, anything you know any number above that. Now, what is the joint probability of this happening? You see, we have to see the intersection of the two events, right? That is capital X lying either at 60 or above and an even numbered face turning up. Now, an even numbered face turning up means either you get 20 okay, or 40 or 60. For each of them, the corresponding X is indeed less than capital X. Okay, because if it is if the event, if a phase number two arrives, then x takes twenty. Okay, that satisfies this. I mean that is part of this because twenty is less than equal to capital X, where capital X is above sixty. Or if it is forty, then again 
this is part of this because x equal to if, if suppose phase number 4 turns up then x is 40 and that satisfies this. So, that is included this in, included in this because 40 is less than equal to capital X where capital X is greater than equal to 60 and same applies for phase number 6 because 60 less than equal to capital X where capital X is greater than equal to 60. So, intersection of the two events is nothing but the event M itself. So, this is nothing but P of M divided by P of M which is equal to 1. This is case number 1. So, when x, equal, x becomes equal to 60 or exceeds that the corresponding conditional probability will be equal to 1. Then consider the next range. less than 60 and greater than equal to 40. Okay. In this case, Now, let us consider the intersection here. M means either phase number 2 or 4 or 6. Now, if 2 comes x is 20, if 4 comes x is 40, but x is lying in this range x can be 40 or 41, 42 up to 59. Okay. So, phase number 6 has no intersection with this, whereas phase number 2 and phase number 4 they have they are part of this because phase number 2 means x taking value 20 okay, and capital X is in this range between 40 to 59. Okay. So, 20 is less than that. Okay. So, that means 20 is contained in this same applies to 40. If phase number 4 turns up the corresponding value is 40, okay. but 40 is surely less than equal to capital X if capital X belongs to this range. So, phase number 4 that is also part of this set because the corresponding value of x lies in, in this range, but not phase number 6. So, that means it is nothing but the probability for f 2 and f 3 f 4, okay, the probability of f 2 and f 4. Now, what is the probability for f 2 and f 4? Out of 6 phases, I am now considering only 2 and it is a fair die. So, this will be 2 by 6 and here it is 3 by 6. So, it is 2 by 3. Okay. Next consider this range. Less than 40. In this case, okay, in this case, we have this again consider the intersection. Phase number 2 is okay because for phase number 2, x takes the value 20 and 20 is less than equal to capital X when capital X is either 20 or 21 and goes up to 39. So, that is satisfied. So, phase number 2 is I mean A and this event A and this event they intersect at phase number 2, but not clearly at phase number 4 or phase number 6. So, it will just be the probability of phase number 2 turning up which is nothing but 1 by 6 because it is only one phase I am now considering. So, this will be 1 by 6 on top and again uh, this is 3 by 6 below which is equal to 1 by 3. Okay. And finally, finally, if x is less than 20 and greater than equal to 0, obviously, you know there is no intersection between a and uh, the other one that is uh, If capital X is in this range, then no phase I mean, A and this they intersect at uh, 
uh, phi okay there is no intersection because you start at phase number 1 so you get 10 okay or maybe phase number 1 is part of it you see no phase number 1 is not part because m corresponds to the events what event that only event numbered phase is turning up okay so either 2 or 4 or 6 out of which 2 is ruled out because for 2 x will be 20 that is out of this range 40 and 60 they are also out of this range so intersection is empty set okay and for which uh, there is intersection is an impossible event for which the corresponding probability is 0 so this will be 0 so if you really plot this you get like this function like this you know I think this is 1 by 3 this is 2 by 3 and here it approaches 1 okay like this what will be the corresponding gain city obviously the derivative of this so density function will be like this there is an impulse here there is an impulse here and there is an impulse here okay that's all there is a corresponding density all right consider another some other example you can call them example or you call them, they call them results also because these are very useful in practical application. So, I will consider two such examples which are you know I mean part of theory also. Again we will try to try to find out the corresponding uh, pro conditional probability distribution function given a particular problem. Problem is simple there is a random variable x which is a continuous random variable in our case as we have been saying and this given that a is nothing but x taking values less than equal to some a a is some given number so this is the thing that event m means x taking values which are less than equal to a we have to find out that is as before all right so first consider the case where capital x is greater than equal to a okay if capital X is greater than equal to A, then what is the intersection between this and this? Now, this means I will consider all values of X for which I mean all, all, all those X for which its value is less than equal to A. Okay, but if capital X is greater than equal to A, naturally the whole of M satisfies this because M corresponds to only those values, I mean those. Uh, x for which the value of x is less than equal to a and since capital x is less than equal to a greater than equal to a that means x is then less than equal to capital x satisfied so in this case the intersection between this event and this event will be the event m itself okay so this will be equal to p of m by p of m which is equal to 1 sorry ok 
okay on the other hand if you now consider the other case that is capital x less than a then again Now, here we have to find out the intersection. Now, A must correspond to what? M I write separately here just for our convenience this case, but now capital X is less than A. So, what is the intersection between the two? Since capital X is less, X is less than A and small x less than equal to x that means this will be part of this okay because this event means x is less than equal to a and this event means x is less than a so this corresponds to intersection will be what this okay x is less than equal to x capital x so this will be what But what is this? This is nothing but the probability distribution for x. And what is this? Pm means p of this event x less than equal to a, which means f a. Okay, this is the case when x is less than a. All right. How about the corresponding densities? How about now this is equal to as we know, sorry. Okay. Now, in one case we have found out that is if this was equal to 1 which means then the probability density function is 0. what will be this because we have already evaluated the expression f of x by m is nothing but f of x by f of m okay and if you derive it then you get px by fm which is nothing but it's not fm actually it should be fa which is nothing but p you can put any variable u d u all right. So, if uh, original f x 
was given like this, it was going like this and then approaching 1 and your A is here, then the conditional probability will be of course, it will go up as we have seen because till it reaches a, its value is f of x by f a and f of x is a non decreasing function in x. Okay, this is x axis. So, this will only grow up, up and finally, it will approach 1 and then it will remain here. So, this is for uh, let me erase it here because there are two plots. this is for f x and this one is for what the event m has been defined earlier. So, the corresponding uh, density functions will be sorry If you consider f of x here, its derivative will be the probability density function, okay, and that will be after this that will be zero, and to the left it will be zero. Okay, the slope is maximum here, so it will be, you know, reaching its peak around a. It will go like actually it's a Gaussian curve, you know, it's, it will be like this. Sorry. this is just p of x, but how about p of uh, x by m we have seen that after a you know after a it was going down right after after a it was becoming 0. So, it will have some function some value which will finally, approach 0 here after a it will have some value, some value, but after that it will become 0. Okay. Consider one more example, there is a more generalized version of this, you know. Here we have considered only one range that is uh, we just took a number a and uh, the event m was given us like this that x taking values less than equal to a. So, that was the condition, but now we want to consider a finite range given by two numbers a and b and the event m will be like this x taking values less than equal to a, but greater than b. Okay. This example 2 we may say we may say x taking values uh, like this ok. So, first consider capital X greater than equal to A. Clearly, What is the intersection of this set? Since capital X is greater than or equal to A, you know X belonging to this means X belonging here will definitely satisfy this. Okay, they will be definitely be less than or equal to X. So, this is nothing but P of M and by P of M that is equal to 1. Then consider the next range that is x 
less than a greater than equal to b. For this, now for this, what is the intersection? Because capital X is now lying in this range. Okay, capital X is lying in this. Whereas m corresponds to what? We write separately. M is x taking values between a and greater than b. And now capital X is lying in this range. Okay. Maybe I just modify it little bit instead of having this let me erase this. So, capital X is above B and less than A okay, and X less than equal to that capital X. That and M they intersect where? They intersect here. Okay, by P m and what is this we have seen this is nothing but f x minus f b divided by P m and P m is of course, you know I mean uh, if you see P m here it is nothing but f a minus f b all right. And the other case other range you know x less than equal to b. Hmm. In that case what is happening? Our m is given as this. And What is the intersection here? Capital X is less than equal to B, whereas M corresponds to those X which lie in this range greater than B less than equal to A. So, intersection is phi empty for which uh, probability is 0. So, clearly this will be 0. Okay. So, corresponding density will be what? When this probability distribution function is 1 that will be 0, when this is 0 that will be 0 and in between in between it will be just derivative of this and then derivative will be what? That is uh, for uh, x greater than equal to a and also for x less than equal to b p of x by m 0 and for x greater than b less than a p of x by a will be p of x because you are deriving it was f x minus f b if you derive you get p x only and the denominator you get f a minus f b. So, that is all for today. And uh, we have covered uh, enough of this uh, topic on uh, random variable and probability density and distribution functions and their properties then conditional probability density, conditional distribution. We have just to consider what is called total probability distribution, total probability distribution and all that. We will take up some few examples in the next class and then we will proceed to what is called function of a random variable. So, long we have been dealing with only a random variable, then you have to consider function of a random variable like you know I mean if x is a random variable then and its probability density is given, but then x square also is a random variable what will be its probability density function and likewise. Okay. So, that will be done in the next class. Thank you very much. Okay. So, in the 
last class uh, we have discussed uh, you know topics up to conditional uh, distribution and conditional density function in this class uh, we will consider what is called uh, total probability and Bayes theorem ok after that maybe a, an example will be taken up a problem and then I will switch over to another topic a new topic which is called function of a random variable ok we will start that topic today ok <coughs> suppose S stands for the set of all possible outcomes ok you know outcomes are like this S1, S2 dot 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 say S M then M outcomes ok. Now, if we form we already know that uh, I mean any subset of this constitutes an event. Suppose we consider some events A1, A2 dot 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 say A k which forms a part partition of S that is A1, A2 and A k they are mutually disjoint and their union is equal to S. In that case as you have seen earlier that for any arbitrary event B we can always write P B as P B by A 1 that is probability of event B condition to the event A 1 times P A 1 plus dot 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 that is likewise P B by A K P A K right. Well, let us for just probability, discrete probabilities, but we can use the same concept to derive the, I mean, corresponding case for probability distributions. Okay. Suppose it's like this. X is the random variable. Okay. S as I told you is a set of all possible outcomes and suppose there are k partitions A1, A2 up to A k. Okay. Then following the same procedure we can write that what is this? This stands for probability of the random variable x taking values less than equal to some given number capital X. Actually this X less than equal to capital X denotes an event that is it is a set of all, all those outcomes for which the random variable takes values less than equal to some pre specified value capital X. Okay. In fact this is what we call as we recall 